Well, good evening. Thank you all for being here. Welcome to the League of Women Voters of Portland's Informational Ballot Measure Program. My name is Debbie Kay, and I have the honor of being the Portland League's president. The League is dedicated to making democracy work. We believe that democracy works best when we are informed about issues and engaged in our communities. The League presents these programs to give our Multnomah County community members an opportunity to learn about issues that affect our lives and our well-being. So thank you again for participating. I want to acknowledge that we are on the occupied sacred lands and waters of the indigenous Chinookan people and other native peoples as well, and that we aspire to be as good and effective stewards of the land and waters as they. Tonight, we have six leading agency officials from Metro, the City of Portland, and Portland Public Schools, and they will discuss their respective ballot measures. Let me remind you that our election is on November 5th. Ballots must be received by 8 o'clock that night. And if you're going to mail it, get it mailed about a week in advance or use a drop-off site in that intervening week. We thank the Multnomah Bar Foundation and the Carol and Velma Sailing Foundation for funding the League's voter service work. And we thank Multnomah County for letting us use their boardroom. This program is also sponsored by our League's Education Fund. Metro East Community Media, our wonderful media partner, will broadcast tonight's ballot measure discussion on its cable channels. The rebroadcast schedule is on the table by the door. YouTube video recordings of each measure discussion in tonight's program will be available soon and posted on the League's website at lwvpdx.org and at our outstanding voter resource center, vote411.org. I am pleased to report that the League of Women Voters of Portland recently released our city government study update titled the City That Works, Preparing Portland for the Future. You can find it on our website, and we hope you will join us right here on November 12th at 7 o'clock to hear about our study results. The back page of your program has information on this important and timely program. The League of Women Voters is a membership organization. If you like this program and the many other programs and services that we offer, then please consider joining us. It is an exciting time. There's a lot to do. We would value your participation and your support. We thank our speakers, our moderator, and League volunteers for their time and expertise in bringing these programs to you. And when you vote, if you have registered your ballot with the county, you get one of these by email. I voted. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce tonight's moderator, a longtime League member and past president of the League of Women Voters of Portland, my esteemed colleague, Carol Cushman. Good evening, and welcome to our informational ballot measure program. Tonight, six leading agency officials from Metro, the City of Portland Water Bureau, and Portland Public Schools will discuss their respective ballot measures on the November 5th special election ballot. Our first two speakers are from Metro Parks and Nature. Laura Oppenheimer, Communications Manager, and Dan Muller, Conservation Program Director. They will have 10 minutes for their presentation. Ballot Measure 26203 authorizes Metro to issue bonds to protect water quality, fish, wildlife habitat, and natural areas. The question on the ballot, shall Metro protect clean water, natural areas, access to parks and nature, and issue bonds estimated to maintain the current tax rate? Laura and Dan? Carol, thank you very much. Uh, just as a reminder, we are public employees, so tonight we'll only be providing factual information. So what, uh, first off, what is Metro? 
Uh, Metro is this region's elected government. Um, well, thank you, Laura. We serve the greater Portland area from Forest Grove to Troutdale and from the Columbia River to Wilsonville. We provide services that cross city limits and county lines, and we also work with communities to plan for the future. Four main areas of our work include land and transportation, arts and events, garbage and recycling, and the topic we're here to discuss today, parks and nature. In the Parks and Nature Department, our mission is to protect clean water, restore fish and wildlife habitat, and connect people to nature close to home. We do that by providing a connected network of parks, trails, and natural areas. Metro manages a significant amount of land within that network, 17,000 acres and counting. We also collaborate with cities, counties, and other park providers and provide funding for local projects. The roots of Metro's park system go back to the early 1990s. The 1990 Green Spaces Master Plan brought together communities to advocate for a vision that protects rivers, streams, and special landscapes for future generations. Soon after, Metro accepted responsibility for Multnomah County Parks and historic cemeteries. Voters across the greater Portland region passed a bond measure in 1995 to begin bringing the Green Spaces Master Plan to life and a second measure in 2006. Since 2013, voters have passed two levies to care for Metro's growing parks and nature system. Spending is winding down on the 2006 bond measure. With that in mind, the Metro Council asked staff to begin engaging the community last year to give input on a potential future bond measure. Between the summer of 2018 and the spring of this year, engagement included two rounds of community forums co-created by community leaders, specialized forums for the urban indigenous community, conservation leaders, and trail advocates, small group interviews with 30 conservation representatives, 25 working land stakeholders, and 47 representatives from local park agencies, an online survey completed by more than 700 people, and a stakeholder table that advised on topics such as values, racial equity, decision-making and oversight, and criteria for prioritizing investments. Across all types of engagement, Metro emphasized hearing from people of color, indigenous people, people with disabilities, and others who have not been well representative, represented in past funding initiatives. Thank you. Based on community feedback, the Metro Council established a framework for the proposed bond measure. The proposed bond measure would maintain the current rate for property taxes, cost about $4 per month for a home assessed at $250,000, raise about $475 million, and fund projects in Clackamas, Multnomah, and Washington counties. It's important to note that bond measures can fund only capital projects, things you can see and touch, like purchasing land or improving facilities, bonds cannot pay for programming. The proposed bond measure would fund projects in six program areas. Across all program areas, projects would be required to meet requirements for advancing racial equity and addressing the impacts of climate change. Explicitly building these elements into a bond measure is new and reflects the Metro Council's policy direction. Beyond equity and climate change, other requirements are specific to each program area, which Laura will describe briefly. Thanks, Dan, and thanks again for having us here tonight. I'll take a few moments to walk through each of the six proposed program areas. The largest overall expenditure in the bond measure, if it is approved by voters, would go toward land purchase and restoration, which would receive $155 million. Metro purchases land from willing sellers at market value and then restores land to improve water quality and fish and wildlife habitat. 
The proposed bond would include 24 distinct geographic areas based on attributes such as the potential to restore stream banks, oak and prairie habitat, and cultural significance. These areas span the greater Portland region. To give a few examples, they would include the Clackamas River Bluffs and Greenway, Johnson Creek, and the Multnomah Channel. One new addition to this program area compared with previous bond measures is that it would include plants and animals that are significant to indigenous people uh, as part of the criteria for both purchasing land and selecting restoration projects. The second proposed program area is uh, park improvements at metro sites. Metro manages 18 parks, natural areas, and boat ramps with formal access to the public. Several more are currently in the design or construction phase and are expected to open in the next several years. If the bond measure is approved, funds would help complete newer nature parks such as Shehalem Ridge in Washington County, which will begin construction soon. The bond, if passed, would also improve existing parks such as Oxbow and Blue Lake by upgrading water systems, trails, bathrooms, and other amenities. Additionally, the bond would prioritize improving access for people with disabilities. As with previous bonds, Metro would distribute monies to cities, counties, and other park providers across greater Portland based on population. Uh, 92 million would go to this local share program, as it's been called, which is intended to provide funding for projects at the community scale. Those funds can go toward purchasing land, restoring fish and wildlife habitat, and building and maintaining parks. Uh, local projects would be held to the same expectations as regional projects for addressing climate change, advancing racial equity, and requiring community engagement. Also on the theme of uh, community projects, Metro would continue its Nature and Neighborhoods grant program, which is designed to support community-led projects, expanding the program from $15 million in the previous bond measure to $40 million in the proposed bond measure if it is passed. Capital grants could be used to purchase land, restore fish and wildlife habitat, or provide access to nature. Priority would go to projects that reduce the impacts of climate change or advance racial equity. This program area would pilot participatory grant making, giving community members more power over decisions about how the money is distributed than they have had in the past. If the bond measure is approved, um, $40 million would be allocated to secure the rights to build new trails and construct missing sections, completing projects identified in a regional plan for a network of walking and biking paths. The proposed bond identifies 39 areas where we could secure the rights to build trail, such as the Clackamas River Greenway, the Marine Drive Trail, the North Portland Greenway, and the Fano Creek Trail. The proposed bond measure also identifies 20 trail construction projects that could be funded in places where the right-of-way already exists, but funding is needed to build a missing section. Lastly, the proposed bond measure includes one new program area, complex community projects. If voters approve the bond, $50 million would be allocated to public projects that also address community issues such as jobs, housing, and transportation. Within that 50 million, $20 million of it would be earmarked for the Willamette Falls Legacy Project, which you'll see here. Metro is working with Oregon City, Clackamas County, and the state of Oregon to create public access to the falls, which are the second largest by volume in North America after only Niagara Falls. Uh, the former industrial site was recently, recently purchased by the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ron. The community has been involved over the past several years in planning for public access. Other projects in this program area would be identified after passage of the bond measure. Projects would be nominated through letters of interest and selected during a review process established by the Metro Council. I want to wrap up by stating that if the bond measure is not approved, the tax rate would drop and the program areas that we've described here would not be funded. Um, 
I also want to point people toward the fall edition of Our Big Backyard, the quarterly publication we put out. On page three, you'll find a factual overview of the proposed bond measure and the six program areas I've described, along with a web link where people can read the full resolution and get more information. That link is oregonmetro.gov slash parks and nature bond. Uh, with that, we'll conclude our presentation and allow time for questions. Thank you, uh, Dan and Laura, for your presentation. Our, our first question, does Metro have enough operating funds to maintain the projects these bonds would pay for? Um, <clears throat> so right now, um, you know, we have, uh, I'm trying to think exactly how to handle this. We, we budget annually for, um, for the work that's required to maintain our, our projects and our existing system. Um, like we mentioned earlier, we have, uh, since 2013, we've passed two operating levies to um, help us to operate our system. And so right now, uh, we do have the funding to operate our current system, and I anticipate in the future that we would continue to have um, uh, the funding to operate our system as we construct it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think you referenced this, but to clarify, why purchase more land instead of managing your existing property? So um, in, this re in terms of land conservation, um, uh, it's important to recognize that um, it's a strategy that we have employed for the last uh, several decades to um, accomplish a couple things. It's to protect water quality. That's uh, important for this region, uh, both in terms of its people, its wildlife, and its business. And then also, um, uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought, but it's important. That's, that's a strategy that we've employed for that, also to address the effects of climate change and other other issues. Um, so uh, there's still clearly more to, to do. Um, you know, we've we've begun uh, we've begun doing a fairly good job of acquiring land. There's there's more land to acquire um, to meet uh, our habitat goals, to meet um, goals that are outlined in our regional conservation strategy, um, and to meet state and even federal um, protection for various species um, and also for water quality. So. Um, you know, that's, that's one strategy that we have, um, and we're also maintaining those properties, uh, I would argue, fairly well um, with, uh, with the properties that we have acquired. I would just add that through the community engagement, we learned that across many demographic groups and specific communities, people did prioritize continuing to protect land in addition to creating access to land. Um, a common theme that we heard was that as people see the effects of population growth, they feel the need to plan for the future. Okay. Um, you made reference to that equity was one of your focuses with this one. What kind of projects do you define as promoting racial equity? Uh, so the Metro Council has adopted a strategic plan to advance um, equity, diversity, and inclusion, which outlines a number of goals. And over the course of the past, oh, two to three years, the Parks and Nature Department adopted an action plan that would help put that um, agency-wide equity work into action. Um, there's a number of aspects um, that are threaded throughout the proposed bond measure. Um, we could give a couple of factual examples. Please. Um, one of those that I mentioned was the inclusion of um, species important to um, Native Americans uh, and indigenous communities across the region in the conservation targets for the proposed bond measure. That's something that was not there before. Um, another piece was um, prioritizing projects that provide access to communities that do not currently have um, adequate access to parks and natural areas. Um, there's a couple different program areas where that's noted as a priority and would go into the project selection. Um, do any others pop to mind that we should share as factual examples? I think those are yeah. good ones. 
Okay. How, how do you respond to people who say there are too many vague projects included in this measure? Why not limit it? I'm, I don't believe that's a question that, that we can answer. Um, okay. I, I apologize for that. You know, it's, yeah. All right. Yeah, I think the only thing we could say, um, I, I agree, it's it's not one that's appropriate for us to answer directly. What I can say is that um, community engagement was identified as something that people want to continue to see and that the bond measure does make uh, commitments to continue that community engagement through the project identification and selection process and, and the execution of those projects. And just to explain to our audience, if you missed this that was said earlier, our guests this evening are employees of Metro. And as employees, they are not allowed to advocate or uh, work on the, the pro-con part of this measure. They are here to present factual information. and. I've, they've, they've warned us and I've warned them that we aren't going to try and ask those questions. I didn't realize I had sort of crossed on this one. Thank you for catching us on that. No problem. Uh, how much of the goal of this measure is for preserving habitat and how much is for facilitating public access? Mm -hmm. I guess there's a couple ways to slice and dice that. If you go by monetary figures, um, you could look to those six program areas and you would see uh, 155 million allocated to land protection and restoration, and then 98 million directly for uh, improvements at metro sites. That being said, some of the program areas leave a lot of flexibility for both types of projects, depending on what local governments or community-led organizations might identify. Um, so that gives you kind of a sense of what's defined and then where there's room um, for that to still flex based on community needs. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, when uh, they said that they felt this was rather vague, when exactly will the old bonds end and the new bonds begin if this measure passes? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I guess uh, one way to answer there's not a there's not a hard ending and, and, a, and a fresh beginning necessarily. Um, we there are still funds remaining in the 2006 bond measure, um, and so those those funds would continue to be spent um, whether another measure is passed or not. And um, if a new measure is passed, then um, our, our financial team would determine uh, when is a proper time to issue a bond sale. Um, looking at past bond measures, I think they would typically happen, I, I'm not promising anything, but they would typically happen within the first six months, per, perhaps, um, after a potential passage. And at that point, um, you know, those funds would, would begin. I apologize. I, I don't know. Yeah, I uh, would say we could. Right. As I understand it, it's a phased approach. With as bonds are retired from the first bond, the new ones would come in, and that there would not be a time when anyone's paying double. But we would be really happy to have our um, finance manager follow up with a detailed explanation of that phasing and provide that to the League of Women Voters for for sharing with members or the public. Okay, and we can put that on our website along with this information. Yeah, we'll be sure to follow up with that more detailed explanation. What other options has Metro looked at to accomplish this task, these tasks if the measure fails? Yeah. I guess I, I don't necessarily have an answer to that. I, that would be something our, our council would have to answer. They're the, um, the body that determines, you know, what funding sources uh, we should pursue to achieve our mission. So that's a question I would have to defer to them. Okay. Um, I know there has been oversight for some of your other programs. Is there a specific oversight going in place for this bond measure? There is, and it's uh, some continuity from the previous measure, and that we have a capital oversight committee that 
uh, provides community independent oversight on all capital expenditures within the Parks and Nature program, including those funded by the previous bond measure and the levy. That group will continue, and the resolution for this proposed bond measure explicitly states that this would come under their purview. In addition to that, we have a Parks and Nature Equity community, Committee that is a newer group um, in an advisory role to oversee and review uh, key aspects of the program to ensure that it's meeting equity goals. Okay, and a final question. Uh, are there ways that you are reaching out to the underserved community through the uh, pro program that will be developed? Uh, I know you've mentioned grants, but are there, is there any direct outreach? Mm -hmm. um, it, as an ongoing programmatic piece, we have a partnerships program where we work with a number of community-based organizations to reach their membership and the communities that they serve. Uh, that's a network that we tap into with any developments in our program and opportunities for them to get involved. Okay, thank you to both of you for the great information you've provided us this evening. That's the time that we have allowed for Measure 26203. Uh, we'll now take a five minute break to switch presenters for our next ballot measure presentation. <laughs> 